in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Today is kind of probably a special Sunday, uh, especially for the rest of all our mothers. Anyways, can we give a hand to all of our mothers around this morning? Come on. We would like to greet them. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I'm kind of like missing my own mother because she's not around. And uh, all of you kids, if your parents are here in the church today, you must be lucky because in a while, we're gonna have surprises for our mother. You will have someone to hug and to kiss later. And for our, uh, you know, husbands around, you all as well a hug and a kiss for your wife. We're going to do that after when I am done uh, for the message. And uh, we would like to acknowledge, you know, the crowd of uh, the crowd in our church around uh, today. I feel honored uh, to have them as already an extended family. I consider myself as an adopted son to the late uh, Lolo uh, Bing and Lola Nene. We just, you know, had beautiful time together from the way to the interment of the late Lola Nene. Uh, Uchida clan are around today. Let's give them a hand. Come on. Now, we cannot do this without asking them, Uchida's uh, coming for the first time in Acts, without asking them to stand. We would like to personally acknowledge them. Can we ask them, please stand, please stand. Okay, yes, they are there. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Uh, I believe uh, the prayers of Brother Jake, Sister Roche, and uh, Sister Wilma are now answered by the Lord. They traveled to Lakdong three, four hours from Japan, you know, with all of their busy schedules uh, to attend uh, the last week in return of Lola Nene. The mandate of the family reached to 80 years old. No story, do not have enough time to elaborate them. But we thank the Lord that on a special Sunday, beside our worship celebration, today is Mother's Day, uh, we have them around. And thank God, thank God. And to those that are here for the first time, we always say, when you come to Acts, you are promised that you are always loved and always accepted. Before we stand to receive the Word of God, I would like us to look to the people in both of our side. Give them a smile. Come on. And tell the person, I'm happy to see you today in the house of the Lord. Come on. Now, I would like us to now stand back for the reading of the Word. Amen. Let's all rise. You may be asking, Pastor, why do we keep to do that before you preach? Well, we honoring the King, the King of Kings. Ladies and gentlemen, today I thought to preach a sermon which I'm going to entitle All When All Bow the Knees to Christ. Amen. And I would like us to open our Bibles, please. We have your scriptures. We're gonna go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 18 verses 22 to 30. Okay, if you have your Bibles and uh, you see one, uh, do not have share share uh, share with her. Okay, here we go. I would like us. I would like to lead us in the reading. Here it is. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, "One thing you lack still." Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Jesus, seeing that he had become sad, said, How difficult it is for those who have wealth to enter into the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. Those who hear this said, Then who can be saved? But he said, What is impossible with man is possible with God. And Peter said, See, we have left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left 
house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sight of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, who will not receive many things more in this life and in the age to come eternal life. We got, we're going to have, I believe, I trust the Lord, a beautiful and wonderful church today as I just feel the anointing of the word leaping out from the scriptures within. May God bless the reading of His word. Everyone will say, the Lord, a clap of praise. You may be seated. City Stott was a 21st century uh, great boy. Maybe you got it across already uh, of the name of this man. Now there was there was this boy in hero, and a line you know uh, became more than just a classic, but an eternal truth. The dreams everywhere. He said, only the which is done for Christ will last. I'm saying back, are you there now? Yeah. Only the which is done for Christ will last. Now this will lead us into understanding that anything we do, except we do them for God, or for the glory of God, they need to be useless. Yes, we enjoy them, but they only are temporary. As to the description of the Apostle Paul, now you see, following you don't. For they're like a flower or leaves of a plant that today are green, but the following day withers already. Hello, amen. I'm not talking of only simple things at the same time. I'm, I'm referring to our successes. I'm referring at the same time, you know, uh, for, our, for our financial attainment. You know, thank God for all of His goodness, isn't it? We started as, there, there a lot, as nobody. Started, you know, from, from obscure beginning. And over time, they become somebody. Wow. But you know what? In every step of our success, in every step of our developments, unless God or Christ is included, they mean to be nothing. They mean to be useless. That's why my message today, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord would want to remind us that there will be that one day to come. Hope that day is now. The day will not be late. Or the day will not be like really very too late. That day will still be that day, this day, this perfect day. Where we come to realize that life at all is supposed to be lived for Christ. Hello, amen? That we are not to run after for anything else but for, for God. Our lives are to believe for God today. One of my most favorite uh, Hollywood actors is Hugh Jackman, the Wolverine in the X-Men series. And uh, who cannot forget the swordfish? John Travolta, the opposite of you, Jackman. And of course, the Val Helsing. And he still has more than a dozen uh, hit film hits, uh, you know, in the Hollywood. But I was shocked to learn recently that you, Jackman, is now suffering, survive, surviving because of a cancer. Well, very no. When he's wounded, there the chemical reaction in his body that those wounds just easily for minutes heal. While they are seeing all of those goblins and all of those uh, Vampire. vampires, he easily exterminated. 
You know, the sword face, he seemed to be impregnable, but the man's battling for life. Maybe he's now realizing what the value, real value of man's life is not to run after for fame, for prestige, yes, for money. But it is how we live our lives in this world to please God. Because one day, good if that realization hit us when we still are strong. Maybe the man is realizing when he's now weak. But what I regret when one realizes when he's already in the fathomless feet, where the only it's the only place where prayer is very long. Where prayer is the sincerest, but it's the only prayer, the, the longest and the sincerest prayer that cannot be answered. Because it is prayed in hell. Amen. Well, I like you to look to someone else and say, I bow my knees. Come on, tell it to someone else say, I bow my knees. Today, to Christ. Can we give the Lord a clap of praise? I'm thinking of Steve Jobs. Yeah. Last year, my birthday, I'm privileged to have one of his peace. <laughs> his man is a legacy, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm wondering where or how, what's happening? How is he feeling now in the next life? Because we read a while ago, in this world and in the age to come, Remember, life is not only this one here. All of us, eventually, we will have our time when we expire our last. But that does not mean everything ceased already or ceased already. Because after we leave this world, this mortal world, we begin immortality. Hello? We, need, we feel pain in our tooth leg. Because this mortal world that, that can be addressed can go to a dentist that can be extracted and pay not. Or you want for a temporary relief, you know, pain reliever can be gone. But with a person in the next life to live immort immortally, in immortality, and without pain, pain will be forever. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Jobs converted to Hinduism. Steve Jobs died as a Hindu. I just do not know what happened to him on his last. Because my Bible said, your scripture said, for there is only one name given under heaven where all men will be saved, and that is Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now, the verses that we are reading, are you still there? Yes. There was a young man, very successful. And was rich, the Bible described, Apostle Luke penned by saying, the man was exceedingly wealthy. And he had a search in his heart, as all of us do have. That he went to Jesus one day excitedly. At last he found the Lord. And as this one life changing, changing question. Lord, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? By the way, you may be red. You may be yellow. You may be white. You may be black. God doesn't care what kind of language we speak yes. or how we express them. Yes. But there will come a time where we come into a realization and will ask this question, what will I do that I not perish? What will I do that I can, ex I can secure my life in the next? Mm. It was the question of the young man, successful, will be. And Jesus smiled on him. You know, when we come and approach the Lord, He doesn't point a finger on us. He doesn't condemn us. He's not offended of us, even if we deserve to be offended of Him. He just smiled on back to the man and said, Okay, 
you do the commandments. Now this time, the cross was not yet done. It was the law. Salvation was complying the law. But then he was a brother something. Now don't be proud, don't be boastful. For the Lord leads the humble, but the face is the proud. They want to say? Amen. Now tell someone, say, stay humble. Stay humble. Don't balloon. Because God can easily poke us and shit. We refuse. Ah, brother, he said, oh, I which commandment you referring, Lord? Well, Jesus mentioned the Ten Commandments. Master, I give you all, every single one of them. And the Lord beated the man because the man, the moment, the time failed. Son, you still lack one thing. You know, the one thing that he was lacking was surrender. Say the word surrender. surrender. The world's principle is never surrender. I know what I'm saying. But in the kingdom of God, you will have to yield. In order for us to lead, we will have to surrender to Christ. Jesus said, He who is afraid to lose his life, because afraid, you know, uh, to be ridiculed. Because when you follow the Lord, men will give you names. Men will persecute you. Men will stand against you. So there are those who are unwilling to give their lives for God, or rather to God. That's why Jesus said, He who is afraid, scared to lose his life, will lose it. Indeed. But he who is not, shall gain eternal life in this world and in the world to come. Amen? Amen. Jesus said there's still one requirement. You laugh. Now this is how the Lord literally spoke to the man. But ladies and gentlemen, I would like to explain how in you know, the verses we read, this is not for all. Jesus specifically spoke to this man to test his heart. To test his commitment. You remember Abraham? Abraham, all he had, his best treasure was Isaac. When he was a hundred and his wife, 90 year old, long at last they have now their own son, Isaac. You remember, amen? But then Isaac, lived, or rather Abraham, little by little, dead. He was now forgetting God, and God would have to test him. And God one day told the man, I want you to bring along your son and sacrifice Isaac to God, to God, to me. Praise be to the living God, Abraham, pass the test. He brought his son on a three-day journey. Imagine how was the torment for three days. His heart and his mind. Every day, will I give Abraham or will I give up Isaac or not? Give not, give not. But his commitment, no, I'm, I'm going to give my own only son for God. I cannot replace God. When he lifted the dagger, was about to strike Isaac. He closed the eyes of his son and all suddenly Jesus in the Old Testament, called as the capital letter A, angel of God. Now theologians refer this as the theophany of Christ of Christ's revelation in the Old Testament, cried and called the name of the prophet, Abraham, Abraham, do not kill your son, for now I have tested your heart, but your heart indeed is faithful to me. And make long story short, they rejoiced. The son and the, uh, the father and the son had renamed the mountain from Moriah into Jehovah Jireh. That's the whole story. And it was to be repeated back to this man. And Jesus talked to the man, go home, sell all that you have, your possessions, and whatever proceed you will have in your hand, give and distribute them to the poor. And when you are done, you come back 
and follow me. But the Bible said the man was very wealthy. The man was very rich. Now, the context of this verse is not to have or to not have money. The context of this passage is when a person loves money. Hello, amen? I'd like us to place our palm on the chest and say, close your eyes and more than you. Okay, we may give the Lord a clap of praise. He was offended to the word of Jesus. Then he turned his back around and he became very sad and the Lord said, I regret. Jesus said, I sympathize, I pity the man. Because hard is the rich to enter into the kingdom of God. We're going to be like a camel to enter into a needle's eye. You know what's a needle's eye? Needle. Needle. The eye of the needle. A camel against the eye of a needle. The apostles shook their heads and remarked to Jesus, Lord, who may enter into the kingdom of God? Of God that may be impossible. That can be very impossible if that's the case. And Jesus said, to what is impossible to man, it is possible with God. Amen? Amen. Now, there are two things I would like to bring about from this passage. Are you still with me, brothers and sisters? Amen? Amen. Number one, we got to talk about blessings, money, and literal graces. Now listen, don't you know that it is not wrong to have riches in life? Everybody says, Amen. Amen. <laughs> It is rather when riches have you. You, you, you. you got me, you understand me. It's not wrong to have wealth. What is wrong is with wealth have you. God would like us to control our blessings and use them for the glory of God. Amen. Do not allow earthly things to control you that you not anymore can follow God, can serve God, give your life to God because something, another force is in control of your life than God. Remember, anything that interferes your choices and your decisions or meaning is a factor controlling you than God, it can be idolatry. Amen. Amen. In the case of Abraham, he was not realizing that actually his son now became his idol in his heart. Now to the man, young man in the scripture that we are reading, money obviously was his God. Now Jesus said, you cannot serve God at the same time. You cannot serve at the same time God and mammon. God would like to bless us. Literally. Because he wanted us to use the blessings to honor and to glorify God. Let's give him a clap of praise. <laughs> Similar to Peter, James and John, they were fishermen. They gave up their boats to become fishers of men. As I mentioned a while, you know, out of the verse that we read a while ago, the purpose of God is not to take things away from us, but rather to help us to become better people how to know, to handle the real things in life. Are you there? Amen? Because there was this four-growth process with the three of the apostles, three of the twelve, the best of friends, Peter, James, and John. They were successful fishermen. One day he met the Lord, and the Lord told him, Are you willing to follow me without ado, without hesitations? They forsook their bow, believed their vocation, and followed the Lord Jesus Christ. They thought to be fishermen, you know, fishes in the, the Holy Land, 
are mostly tilapia. Who's here still eat tilapia? If you go to Manila, Plapla costs like 700. Wow. Yeah. An, an order, a platter. But here, who cares? We do not eat tilapia here. They were willing to give up their tilapia to become fisher of men. Remember, when the Lord demands you something, maybe your time. When the Lord demands you your finances, maybe your tithes. When the Lord demands you your relationship because your boyfriend is an unbeliever. Your girlfriend stopping you to go to church. He is demanding you because he knows you are in peril. And he wants to replace you with better things. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not a cheap. God is a good God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap. Brother James and I, one time, were together. James Garcia. Well, it was after the interment. There was this song. Uh, I'm, I'm singing to my son. And we're talking about a lot of things. I, I miss Brother James, you know. Brother James only come on weekends. And that's how he only, you know, stretch his time for his family. And uh, I make the most in having the time with the man, one of my best in the church. And he was bragging around to me, son. Any father can do. BJ one time approached his papa, dad. You know this time? I do not run out with I do not run out with money in my pocket, in my wallet. See that? I like before. And he said, Dad, because I'm a tiger. You know the man standing here, very tall, his name is Chester. Five feet and eleven inches. He doesn't love to talk, he shakes. But when I saw him the first, he gave a testimony on his giving. Because we really do have the hesitations on, you know, we can trust God to anything but our money. Huh? That's crazy. We trust God for our future, we can trust God for our life, we can trust God for our eterna eternity, but not our money. Until one day he collided. And yielded to God, surrendered to God, like the young rich man. Okay, Lord. He started to give his tithes. He started to give his offering. Lo and behold, he did loss. Rather, he received one promotion. And I just heard from my wife that the boy also received another promotion. And hopefully, God willing, on June, God willing, he can study and enroll to the law school. And maybe five years from now, God willing, he can be a lawyer. Who knows? Hello. Amen. To him be the praise. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Amen. I know another young man cried and sobbed and almost was, he was feeling it was the end of his life. He was 16 years old. He lost his girlfriend. His girlfriend broke him. And he felt like, seems to be the end of the world. Some brethren started to comfort him, telling him, all is well. She doesn't deserve you. Anyway, you're still 16 years old, come on. Life's not, it's life's not at all, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend. And anyway, he was able to move on. I was many years ago, and the brother became successful, and uh, the brother found a prettier woman, and uh, also a career woman, and uh, later on, you know, as they met, and uh, they decided to marry on the right age. And you know what? Both of them are serving the Lord and are successful, they have peace. But every time this young man, who was 16 year old, when they met together with the pastor and the pastor smiles, the pastor remembers of his experience when he was a teenager, the man in embarrassment would shake his head and say, thank you, pastor. 
God doesn't take things away from you because He's a cheat. He takes things away from you because you do not deserve them. What I mean is because He doesn't want you to be hurt. He doesn't want you, ladies and gentlemen, to suffer. Because when the Lord blesses, He's saying to it that they, the blessings you're receiving, they are your full blessings. Not part you're happy, but part you cry. Are you with me? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> Listen to this. Opposite to our notions, God is more than willing to bless us, even to those that we didn't ask. That's the heart of God. We thought God could not give us. How about starting to pray now? I like Ching Ching. By the way, she gave or she made a one leap of faith. How much Ching Ching is receiving? I mean, she's just an ordinary, regular saints lady. A thought of how about to sacrifice this one? So she has this one box. I don't know it's following here, or two, or three, or five, or six, or ten. I do not know. By God's grace, with faith, somehow we can fill that box eventually one day, and we can have our own church and lot. Amen. Let's give God a praise. <laughs> yeah. Have we prayed? Have you started? Have you begun to join the church to pray, Lord, somehow? No, not somehow. Lord! That you would give us our own church, said Lord. And God will answer you. It's, it's wrong to say, uh, I will not pray for a house because God cannot give it. Who says God cannot? God is the maker of the universe. Every time you feel like you are limited, I, I just like you to be reminded that God is the creator and the maker of that mighty son. When you ask for one simple thing, the only are just such a minute thing in the hand of God. For nothing is too difficult unto the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Remember Solomon. Because when we ask, the Lord is able to do them. Because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask of them. He was a young man and received such a huge responsibility, being the king who inherited the mighty kingdom of Israel from his father David. Are you still there? Yeah. One night God visited him in a dream. Now there are, listen, there are certain dreams that are God's inspired. They're not all dreams. In that wise God appeared to him in a dream, vividly. God talked to Solomon. Solomon, what would you like me to do for you? Anything. I'll do it for you. And God was just testing Solomon and he said, Lord, that you will grant me wisdom because the responsibility being the king of the kingdom is so huge. And I'm only naive. I cannot handle your responsibility. If you grant me wisdom, you know what? God was happy to the prayer of Solomon. And God talked to the king in his dream. I am happy because you are not asking for wealth. You are not asking for the defeat of your enemy. And you are not asking honor, honor or prestige. Now, I am going to answer your prayer. I shall grant you wisdom plus. I will give you wealth. I will give you the defeat of your enemy and I will give you honor. Wow. God is well able. Let's give him a clap of praise. I mean, if you can still recite Matthew 6.33, if you will, go with me. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. All of those will just be added unto us. Psalm 103 verse 13 says, For the Lord knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like. The Lord wanted to bless you because He knows our frailty. He knows our limitations. 
my son will be graduating, thank God, on July, July 7. They are a little late because, you know, my son is a medical technology and he will graduate with a citation as the most outstanding student of the batch. Today and I were such the proudest being parents and he penned, you know, this uh, comment in his uh, in his status, you know, Facebook, and I was touched to what he said. Psalms 37 verse 4, the Lord promises, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give the desires of your heart. We have our desires. God can give them, but the question, are you delighting yourself? Amen? Now, when we fail, when we fail to meet the demands of God, either of these two things may happen. You know, when a person disobeys God, like the man, the rich man, either of these two things can happen to him. Number one, I call them all time short. What is that? All the time you have less and are not happy. You see what I mean? You don't have money. You're not happy, always. Or you do you fail to are uh, you fail to comply with the demand of God, you will have, you may have vain glory. What is vain glory? You have all. You may have all, but are not still happy. Because what profits a man if he gains the whole world, yet he loses his soul. He's away from God. Amen? Amen. Now listen, I call this as the third option. I want you to gesture it to me like, like to say, third option, come on. Third option. Now, now everyone did that. We are recording my sermon and we are giving this to the rest of our members all over for our, for our ja Japan church members to Nene, to, uh, to R, to P, and to Sister Junji. And and to Didi, Didi is from US. What about you? Be up. Oh, that that uh, loud and the uh, noisy girl there. She attends the church, noisy and loud, and she able to bring and listen to how she speaks. She's speaking American in accent. I I reply to her British. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to share. I am thank God. He's uh, purchasing us coffee every time. We may send you a copy of this. Now, for the rest, those of you watching me, do it like this as well. Everyone, do it like this. Uh, third option, come on. Loud to say third option. First option, all time short. You have less and are not happy. The second option, you have all, but still are not happy. Here's the third option. God wants us to have all and at the same time happy. Let's give God a good praise. How will it happen? I will conclude my sermon. Quoting verses 29, quoting verses 29 and 30 of the passage we read. The Lord Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who will not receive many times more in this life and in the age to come. Everybody says amen. Yeah. No, I'd like, I'd like you to read the conclusions together and we said to them, the council three, will you? One, two, three, come on. And you said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has set a house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times more in this life and be able to love Let's give God a praise for that. More in this time, many times more in this time. And in the age to come. 
Did you, did you receive the word of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Are you happy? Amen. Can we all stand? It's all right. It's all right. Can I ask our worshiping uh, 